Hey guys, today I'm going to talk to you about one particularly interesting PlayStation controller. Um, as you may have guessed, I, I review a lot of these odd, quirky, sometimes unbranded, some, a lot of times unlicensed uh, PlayStation 4 controllers. And what I have in my hand is a particularly unique type of unbranded controller or in this case, unlicensed controller. Uh, first, some context. Uh, the First, some context. There are a couple of unlicensed controllers running around. You already know most of them, the Larego, and a couple of other Chinese-produced uh, control pads. There are nevertheless, and this is interesting to note, that the Larego while it is very much a uh, per almost perfect replica minus the touchpad it is for the most part a functioning controller it is it does not offer the complete uh, c experience that you get out of re of a regular PlayStation 4 controller then there's this other unbranded third party controller running around called the Double Shock 4. I've seen a couple of listings online, and the thing to take note is that uh, this this particular control. I mean, first of all, uh, sorry, the box is a little damaged, you know, for shipping, but that's not important. The important thing is that this Double Shock 4 is, from what I understand, a very similar, near perfect experience from the, well, traditional PlayStation 4 console controller, like, for example, this one, which is the legit original one. Now, here's the thing. While there is indeed a Double Shock 4 uh, running around uh, that you can find on places like eBay and AliExpress, for example, you have to take, you have to be a little careful because there are also a ton, and I mean a ton, of counterfeits. Or, to be more specific, knockoffs. This is, for the most part, this is, interestingly enough, a knockoff of a knockoff. Because the unbranded, from what I see from pictures, the, the buttons aren't clearly displayed. This one, on the other hand, shares very similar designs to, for example, the Larego one. Uh, the shoulder, the buttons are just obviously bigger. This one is clearly imitating the classic controller a lot, a lot more regularly. Now this one here, interesting to note, um, and it's interesting to note, and I should mention this, Importantly is that the seller was crystal clear that this was a wired controller. Even though you look at it and it just looks like your your standard wireless controller. It is not. This one is, wire, is a wired controller that absolutely requires you, you place the power cable, the charging cable, directly into the console. Otherwise, it will not work. It is just... Without it, it's basically a, a paperweight. Now, I say this. Now, interestingly enough, for a knockoff of a knockoff, it's actually pretty decent. You know, just a quick rundown. I mean, you obviously know what this is going on. You know, cross, circle, triangle, square buttons. The designs are basically very similar to the most, to all the other generic unbranded Unbranded uh, that you see somewhere. Sometimes they use numbers. Sometimes they have nothing here. You have also you have clearly the home button over here, the options button, the share button. You got the digital log. You got the dual dual analog sticks. Triggers over here, and of course this is the indicator. Now and of course because this is a knockoff of a knockoff, this is obviously not a touchpad. I've already tried it. It does not work. It it only has much like the Larigo. It's just a button, physical button, 
unless you have, you want to use specifically the the push down function, that's the only thing it does. Again, it's exactly like this one, except that this one is basically looks like a mock-up police report controller. It's interestingly enough lightweight, fit pretty comfortable actually. I mean, the cable could be longer. Uh, it's also fairly lightweight, which is kind of surprising. When you consider that, uh, near as I could tell, this one does not even have a proper, uh, from what I understand, rumble feature. So, this is the bare minimum of, of what you can expect from a controller. It's, interestingly enough, while, again, it's one of those cases of buyer beware, even though, and I stress... Uh, the seller was very, was crystal clear that this, despite the fact that it's being presented as a wireless control, it is not. As a matter of fact, the actual box says so. I Honestly, I can't find any other information about the developer or the tracker. I'm just saying that uh, if you are looking for this, for the Double Shock 4, maybe just do a little quick research first and look at it carefully and this is one of the reasons I'm trying to make up this video, is to show you that, yes, there are knockoffs of existing knockoffs that just have the bare minimum of what you consider a controller. Now this one, again, if you can ignore the obvious shortcomings, it's quite honestly, you know, for what it is, for what the price is, because, again, if, if you get it somewhere around 15 to 20 euros, it's obviously a knockoff of the knockoff because the actual do Double Shock 4 is a little more expensive for what I'm told. You're, this is probably the closest thing to the real thing without being, you know, wired. Oh, and of course, uh, the knockoff, the original knockoff, allows you to actually use the microphone jack. This one does not have. Does not have it because, for, quite frankly, this is the bare minimum of what you can do with a controller. Like I said, it's lightweight. Uh, if if you're not comfortable with rumble features, this sh should be okay. I plan on using this for as long as it works. Uh, I'm not sure if the longevity is a factor. But as far as knockoffs go, you could do a whole lot worse, to be honest. So as a whole, I would maybe put this, once again, if you're looking for a budget controller, something that you, you know, play with your friends, or, you know, you just want to have something that just plays the games, and you don't really need to use touch functionality all that much, I say this is a good way to give, give your controller a rest, because Lord knows that this, that the battery on these uh, PlayStation 4, 4 controllers, by God, they last about three days at most. Kind of annoying. Which is why people are kind of scrambling to look for these. So as a whole, this this Double Shock uh, knockoff is kind of an interesting, interesting buy. I mean, if you, of course, if the seller is trying to scam you, again, beware. Check the box first, see if it is in stock. But for the most part, as a knockoff controller, I'd say it's pretty good. I mean, for sorry, in this case, pretty good for being a knockoff of a knockoff. You know, if you, again, if you got like 15 euros to spare, it took me like a week to, to arrive in though it was from China, so, again, it's not bad. But also, by the way, it works simply out of the box. Unlike the Larego, in which, in most cases, you need uh, the firmware update, uh, this does not. As a matter of fact, you don't even need to do much of an update. So, again, interesting, interestingly experience. This is essentially the cheapest alternative, the bare minimal of which you can consider a working controller. Do I recommend it? Eh, lukewarm. I mean, I like it, but I probably other gamers will not. Signing off.